Hello there everybody, this is Alex from Hardcore and Guides being my guide for Resident Evil 4 on Professional Difficulty. Today we are doing Chapter 2-2. This will be, I think, second to last act of Chapter 2, maybe. It's, I think Chapter 2 only has like three or four, I don't, know, I don't remember. Either way, so we just got Ashley in the last chapter, and I know a lot of people are probably like, oh great, here we go. This is the point where the game starts to suck, and honestly, not really. Ashley's not too terrible if you know what to do with her, really. If you know where to hide her at, you should be fine. So, upon coming outside of the church, you're going to be ambushed. Mm, I wouldn't say ambushed. More like there's going to be enemies in the way, but... Either way, if you shoot that carriage thing right there that had the barrels on it, it'll start to, you know, go down and explode at one point. Now, I'm not exactly sure of where the positioning is for the enemies here, so if you were wanting to do it and figure out yourself, you totally can, but, no, well, again, of course you can. I mean, I'm not going to stop you, but... My suggestion is, um, running up to it, having the enemies, like, start to kind of chase you down. That way they at least get in front of it, and then, you know, shoot it and then blow it up and all that. That's what I would say to do. I, I didn't do it because I thought that maybe if I ran in front of them, you know, if I ran toward the carriage, like, directly toward it, the enemies would start coming toward me and they would just avoid the whole thing in general, or the wagon, whatever it is. So, that's why I didn't do it. That's why I shot it first. It looked like I might have got stuff from it. Might It might have hit somebody. I'm not really too sure. So, if you know the positioning on that, uh, by all means, use that to your advantage. And if you miss people like I did, then just, you know, pick them off like you normally would. So, yeah. <laughs> that's that's my guide videos in a nutshell. Yeah, just do this, and if you don't want to do that, then don't do it. That's literally every guide i ever done. Okay, so here we got some money. I found a little crow's nest just hanging up there. It's nice when you actually beat this game, not just in professional mode, but just any mode in general, and you get the uh, cleared game, or basically new round mode, where it's like New Game Plus pretty much, and you can run through and buy like the Infinite Launcher and Matilda and all that. And there's that one weapon, I forget what it's called, it's like the P-something, it's that electric gun that just, when, once you charge it up, it's got infinite ammo too, which is awesome. You charge it up and it shoots just anything that it, it, it spots. And it can spot like secret items and stuff for you, so it's really nice. So here I decided to finally buy the Red 9. I kind of made a mistake here because I could have sold off my handgun instead of actually just, you know, you. Um, what, what, what am I having trouble speaking today? Instead of just departing it, you know, or just getting rid of it for free, basically. Discarding, that's what the word I'm looking for. Instead of just discarding the weapon, I could have sold it, but I didn't have any room to really get rid of it because if I would have made room for the two pistols, you know, I would have got rid of ammo or some healing items, so, which I didn't realize I had TMP ammo on me at all. Again, if you're using TMP, by all means, go ahead. It's not a bad weapon by any means. It, it's actually pretty decent on its own. It really is, trust me. It's just, I don't prefer to use it because I, I just want to kind of have more inventory space. I want to have the more specific weapons that cater to my taste in my inventory. So if anything, you can probably just I don't know what I would trade out for it, really. I don't know what anybody would really trade out for it. There, there's probably room. I just don't really want it, I guess. I mean, I, I like the shotgun because if enemies get close to me, I can blow them back in one shot. I like having the rifle. That way, at least I have some distance shots and I can get some nice headshots that typically knock them off in, like, one shot, and I like that. And later on, I get the semi-auto rifle, which, you know, comes with the infrared scope that we're going to need in order to take out the regenerators. Or, what are they called? I know there's one that's called, like, the Iron Maiden. I forget what the other ones were called. But regardless, uh, taking out those guys, the ones that have those little leeches they hit the spot with the TMP. I think You can take them out with a shotgun. I've done it before. I just find it easier just to use the infrared. Okay, so now we're back in the village part of things. Or at least um, the farm area. So, I instantly go to the right, and I head up that tower thing, and I climb the ladder and all that, and I decided to let Ashley just wait there instead, because the enemies typically won't climb up there. And I feel like the reason why they won't climb up there to get Ashley is because they have to jump down, and I feel like the programming wasn't put in for them to essentially climb down with her, you know, in their arms or something. I'm not really too sure on how they worked that out, but as far as I've 
played this game, like every time I've played this game, if I if I was worried about Ashley being here, I would just put her up in that tower thing. It, it always just served me served me great wonders. So that's just that's just my suggestion for a nice little hiding spot. Most likely, you guys should know pretty much you know what to do with that stuff, like how to you know make her follow and wait. Oop, my bad. Make her follow and wait and all that good stuff. So I shouldn't have to really tell you everything, but. Either way, I'll, I'll try to show you off, um, show you guys some hiding spots that I can find. So these guys are just your typical enemies. You can pretty much just run past them if you wanted to. If you want to stay back and fight, then go ahead. This right here, honestly, like looking back, I could have done a much better job with this guy than I did before when I first recorded this. Honestly, because I'm just wasting ammo willy-nilly like an idiot. And that's the thing, like you do get enough ammo in this game, it's just... The shotgun, you know, it's too good to really waste, I guess. I still, I just want as much ammo for it as I possibly can. The other problem is, too, like, if you save up too much ammo, you run out of space for healing items. So it's kind of like that, you know, win-lose situation thing. You have to really kind of figure out what, uh, what you really honestly need. So I, I ended up taking out all the enemies here. They weren't really too tough, to be honest. They're just basic enemies. No Dr. Salvador or anything like that. So we're all good. And then upon coming over here, there's going to be a bunch of bear traps in the way. So just keep your eye out for this. Ashley can get stuck in it. And yes, she can get hurt. And you have to help her out. Which is kind of annoying. I found that out when I was going through... Um, well, I knew she would get stuck. I was just wondering if she would pride herself. But I, I remembered, oh yeah, I had to do it myself because she's not strong enough to do it on her own. So these guys are just passed. I just said screw them. You can fight them if you want. And instantly coming into this next area, I decided to put Ashley in that trash bin thing, which in my original playthrough from like a long time ago, I was always kind of sketchy about the whole like, you know, trash bins, hiding her in there because I, I would always think that they would just know where she's at. That doesn't seem to be the case. So I think she's pretty much well hidden at this point. But anyway, back what I was saying. Um, oh crap, hold on. What was it? Oh, I absolutely just totally forgot. What the hell was I going to say? Oh yeah, the bear traps. Yeah, so in my new round playthrough of professional mode, I'm wearing the Mafia outfit, which Ashley gets the medieval outfit, and she pretty much takes no damage, and she can't get grabbed. She can get grabbed, but she'll instantly just fall out of their arms, which is nice. It's pretty much just a way to prevent, you know, Ashley just getting caught or anything like that. Just ruining your game because of Ashley issues, you know. And, uh... She got caught in one of the bear traps, but she couldn't get it herself, so I had to help her out. Even though she had armor on, she didn't take any damage, but... I still had to help her dumbass out, so it happens. That's that's actually for you. Honestly, I, I really do prefer the Red Nine. You sh you saw that earlier. There was actually one person I shot that I got a nice good crit on. I, I actually headshot one guy earlier in the uh, farm area. In the, uh, this is part of the farm area too, but the the first part where the tower is at, and. You know, you saw that I got like a one good and nice headshot on him. Same thing with the rifle right here too. Like, god dang. Now, typically, if the enemy doesn't necessarily drop in, like, the first headshot, that's typically when you know that they're going to have a Las Plagas. So, just keep your eye out for that. Watch out for that guy back there, too. That guy can be kind of an asshole because he's hiding just just away from everyone else. It pisses me off because every time I, I get over there, I always forget about him being there. And it's he, then he attacks me. I'm like, are you serious? Or he grabs Ashley or hits Ashley, whichever one. Which, honestly, having Ashley get hit isn't as bad as like Leon getting hit because there are times in the game where Ashley will pretty much lead the party so to speak she'll end up going somewhere else or getting caught or something stupid like that and you know Leon will have his opportunity to be by himself most of the time and honestly I feel like when it comes to this game like half of it is probably spent with Ashley and the other half is probably spent with just Leon by himself that, that's what I feel like I could be totally wrong it could be like Maybe a third of the game is spent with Ashley, and the rest is just Leon by himself. Because really, like, at end game, you know, you don't really have Ashley for a while. And I think that's because they just want to spare you the trouble of having to put up with her dumb ass the whole time. Like, even the developers knew, like, yeah, this is going to get kind of annoying. Like I said, Ashley's not too terrible. It's, you know, if you know where to hide her, you should be fine, really. My problem is the freaking camera angle. Like, whenever she's following me, and you'll notice I do it sometimes, too. I don't know if... Oh. 
I think I at least at least I did do it recording. I believe I did. I do it just on my own time, of course. I'll end up like making her stay in one particular spot, run to where I want to go, and then just have her follow me. Yeah, it wastes more time, but for me, it makes the camera a little bit easier to deal with. I, I don't know why it does that for me. It's just something that I have an issue with, I guess. It's just the weird camera angle here. It's very odd. Anyway, back on topic. Let's get back into the action here. So now we met up with Lewis once again, and there's a trick here with with these kinds of stuff. You don't necessarily have to push the bookshelves in the way. You can do that later on if you really want to, honestly. You can kill enemies outside the windows too, and even though they drop items, once you've completed this area, you can go outside and actually grab your items. So don't worry about that. What I do here is I push all the bookshelves in the way, and I instantly run upstairs and grab every item that I possibly can. Which, unfortunately, I can't grab everything, but hey, you know, it works. So, yeah, fucking grenade gets in the way again, looks like. Maybe? No? Oh, I think I just opened up my... Yeah, okay, now I'm just gonna go ahead and combine some things, it looks like. Boop and boop. Yeah, look at all those freaking um, full herb, like, you know, green, red, and yellow herbs I've got combined there. Jeez, that's a lot of max health right there. So, I instantly run upstairs, clean it off, and then I instantly run right back downstairs and wait for the enemies to start spawning in. There are, I think, 40 Ganados you need to kill in total. Now, keeping track, I don't care too much for. I, I'd say this part will probably take you about 5 to 10 minutes. Maybe 10 minutes at the most, I, I would assume. Lewis is here to help you. I think if he kills an enemy, I think it also counts toward your your kill count it should at least so what I do is again like I said I come back down here and I stay near the stairs and I'm having troubles trying to figure out what to grab I guess like a complete dunce also items do disappear after a while but it, it takes a while for that to happen if enemies get too close to me I'll start running back up the stairs and I get to the very peak of the stairs the reason why is because the enemy, like, you're still on the level on where the enemies will come at you from the ground level. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to prevent them from coming from behind me. Which, they won't come from behind me if I'm at this particular spot. So, which that kind of helps out a whole lot. This is a nice little nifty trick, and it definitely saves me the trouble of having to deal with assholes. Lewis will come upstairs at one point, but he'll basically take care of everything that comes up there. I think there are enemies that do spawn up there, but they mostly focus on him. So the game will try to force them to go upstairs, but they'll, they won't force them to come toward you when they're upstairs too. If you understand, if you guys understand what I'm talking about. Also, this is the part where I learned. I learned this from watching a speedrun actually, but this is where I learned the whole fact that there's only two lost plagas that can spawn in one area at one point. So, if you wanted to, you can keep them alive. You don't have to. Uh, really, there's no benefit or really any hindrance to it whatsoever, I feel like. The only benefit I can see having the Lost Plagas both spawn at the same time is to save the trouble from killing other enemies. As in, like, if you get a headshot on, like, a random guy, he's gonna drop. You know, instead of just being a Lost Plagas asshole carrier or whatever. Instead of having AIDS, you know, he's just gonna drop off dead no matter what, so. Did he go upstairs yet? I don't know. So what I do is, of course, as you can see, I'm just using the shotgun and just keeping them at a distance. The reason why standing on the peak of the stairs, or at least right there, and I don't know if it happens in this video or not, I don't remember, it might have happened in my previous uh, playthrough, my original playthrough, is there's a certain spot where enemies can go underneath the stairs and still hit you from, even though you're on the stairs, if you, if you see what I'm talking about. And it's... Like halfway down the stairs, I would say. They can go toward the side of the stairs and hit you from there. Yeah, see, like, I'm, I'm even at, like, the very top, like, the top floor here. And even that's a little too far, in my opinion. So I just try to stay up here. Of course, you got enemies that are going to throw stuff at you, so, you know, if you want to deal with that, you can. Flash grenades are good for taking out the Blagas. And, you know, if you got some grenades on you, you can throw them away if you wanted to and just knock these guys out. Yeah, see, I think this took me, like, what, it's been, like, three minutes, I think? Yeah, something like that. I'm not really too sure. Now, if you wanted to take longer, you could always just handgun them, like, shoot them in the head and then kick them off. Or, 
all things is considered, just, you know, use a knife and then kick him that way. I think that would just take too long, personally. That's just me. Also, whenever the Plaga starts spawning, you do have a certain time period that you can you can kill them regardless of what stage they're at. But there's a there's a certain time period before they actually spawn the whole, you know, sword blade part of them. Essentially, where they uh, fully evolve, pretty much, into, like, the full creature itself. So, you always got that time period there. Sometimes... Not all the time, but sometimes Lewis will actually hand you ammo if you start running out, which is nice, but I don't think he did right here. He typically hands you handgun ammo because he's using Red Knight himself, so he'll probably end up using that. And that should be it for that. So, anyway, guys, uh, quick ending. <laughs> yeah, of course. But, anyway, that's the end of Chapter 2-2, two, two, and I'll see y'all in, I think, Chapter 2-3. So, as always, take care, everybody.